All right, so you've opened up your Coast Runner. You've got it sitting on your desk, um, and maybe you've got the files on the flash drive open on your computer. Now what? Um, well, of course, the very first thing you'll need to do is simply get everything plugged in. Uh, you've probably already found the fact that Coast Runner has both a standard NEMA power cable uh, as well as a USB A to B cable. Um, and those are the only cables you will need to connect your Coast Runner. So let's plug in the power cable first. Uh, of course, you'll put one end into any wall outlet and the other end goes into the back of the Coast Runner. Uh, if you're looking at it from the angle that this video is being shot at, it's on the right side of the back of the machine. So I'm going to plug it in. And you'll see the lights will turn on in the machine, and you'll hear a fan start spinning. What this means is that the machine is now receiving power um, to the motors. That's separate from power to the uh, control board of the machine, which is powered by USB. That's not really important for most use cases, uh, but you have to have both of those things plugged in to work. And on that subject, let's now plug in the USB cable. And now it's plugged in. You may have heard the machine make a little clicking noise that indicates that the, um, the board is now active and powered. If you're on a Windows computer, um, that, power, or that, that, that USB cable um, may also cause the hardware-connected sound, depending on whether or not you have your Arduino drivers installed yet. If you don't, then when you install the software for the first time, um, it will automatically install those for you. So just connecting those two cables, and now you're fully connected. That's all it takes. Let's finish up this video by getting the software installed. Um, I, again, I'm on a Mac right now, so I have a disk image file, but if you're on a Windows computer, you'll also have an EXE. In either case, you'll install it just like you would any other software. So for the Mac, I'm going to drag it over to my Applications window. And I've already got an existing one on this laptop, but you won't, uh, so you'll just copy it right over. It'll go through its standard install procedure. For what it's worth, on a Windows computer, depending on what version of the software you're using, you may or may not get a warning about whether you should install the software or not. Um, of course, you can click through that warning and um, continue installing the software like normal. OK, our software is installed. Um, now I will open it up, see our right. There it is. And here, here's sort of the warning I was talking about. It's making sure that you do want to open CR right. Of course you do, so we'll open it. And there it is, CR right opened. Now you may have noticed that down here at the bottom is a mill status indicator which because we are plugged in says it was connected. You may have noticed that when we first opened the software, it briefly showed uh, that it was connecting, had a yellow indicator. Uh, that indicator will always tell you whether the computer can talk to CR right or not. So to experiment, if I unplug my USB cable, you'll see it now goes into the not connected status. Um, and indeed, if I close CR right and then say reopen it, There we go. It'll start up as not connected. So if I plug in the cable, it'll go into connecting. And then connected. So you can always use that indicator to know whether the computer can see the CR right software or not. Um, and that's really all there is to getting the mill connected. Now you have your software installed. Everything's plugged in. What's next is to uh, run your first file. So we'll do that in the next video.